Welcome everyone to GamerMeld. Longtime followers of the channel may have noticed I've got my monitors back. About a month and a half ago, they both, almost right at the exact same time, started going out. This one actually got really bad with tons and tons of lines going through it. This one had a pretty annoying line up the top, so I actually sent them both back. Got my LG back quite a while ago, about a month ago or so, and then finally got this one back, uh, I think about two days ago. Anyway, small little story at the beginning. Uh, today we have some pretty sweet news. Most of it revolves around Intel's keynote at GDC, plus we've got a newly leaked benchmark. But first, check out today's sponsor, Mastrop, a group buy website with amazing deals on PC hardware. It's free to sign up, so what are you waiting for? Start saving now by visiting the link in the description below. As I'm sure many of you are aware, Intel isn't known for having a great GPU, but because they're the largest CPU provider and most of their CPUs include an integrated GPU, a ton of consumers use them. So it's a pretty huge deal when they upgrade it, especially like this. As I've covered in a previous video, Intel's 11th gen iGPU gets up to one teraflop of FP32 computational power. Well, today we've got a leaked benchmark that gives us some real-world performance. It was found and shared by Tom Apisak, and it's an Ashes of the Singularity benchmark. As you can see, the 11th gen scored a decent 1400 points with low settings on 1080p and got an overall average FPS of 15. Now, that may not sound like much, but when compared to Intel's UHD 620, it's almost exactly double the performance. What's even more interesting is that it's also nearly identical to Nvidia's discrete MX130 and it far exceeds their MX110. Remember, these are discrete GPUs, many times needing separate cooling. To top it all off, when we look at the designation LP on the benchmark, this, coupled with the low core count and clock speed, tells us it's likely a low power Ultrabook chip, meaning it'll likely get even more on desktop. Basically, even though it won't beat the MX150, this is set to cause some serious pain to NVIDIA's mobile discrete GPU market. And while it likely won't compare to AMD's upcoming APUs, Intel is clearly working hard in the GPU world. Speaking of Intel's GPUs, we have our first look at the company's discrete graphics card designs. The designs were shown off during Intel's GDC keynote, and while we saw some early fan-made renders late last year, while well, still apparently fan-made, these are clearly some Intel is seriously thinking about. The first being this one, which actually looks pretty sweet with what appears to be kind of like dragon scales around the blower style fan. Next up, you can tell the company isn't joking about their XE naming scheme with it across the front and back of the design, but basically it looks like a bolder design of the original Optane looking design made last year. Definitely not bad, though Intel does say that they have more. Next up, Intel announced that they will in fact be releasing 9th generation mobile processors. They didn't give us much other than a tease in that they'll be the company's H or high power series mobile chips. Most rumors point to 8 core 16 thread CPUs and they're set to launch in the second quarter of 2019. Lastly for today, Intel also announced what they're calling the Graphics Command Center, which is basically their version of GeForce Experience or AMD's Adrenaline software. And while they didn't go over much, other than that it optimizes your games, it's easy to use, etc., it's actually available for early access right now. If you want me to check that out, let me know down in the comments below. So while that does it for today, what did you think of the news? Excited for Intel's next generation iGPU, or are you more ready for their discrete GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below, and if you liked the video, definitely make sure to subscribe. And as always, have a great day.